morning. Uh, my name is Lisa Harrington. I am one of the pastors at Blue Oaks Church and for the past five years have been coming into uh, senior assisted living facilities to lead chapel service and sing songs. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to sing some songs. Uh, so please join me. We're going to start with Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved? How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as The next song we're going to do is called Faith of Our Fathers, so it should be number two in your songbooks, Faith of Our Fathers. Faith of our fathers living still in spite of dungeon fire and sword, oh how our hearts beat high with joy whene'er we hear that glorious word faith of our father's holy faith we will be true to thee till death verse 2 our fathers chained in prisons dark were still in heart and conscience free. How sweet would be their children's fate if they like them could die for thee. Faith of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to thee. our fathers we will strive to win all nations unto thee and through the truth that comes from God mankind shall then be truly free faith of our fathers holy faith we to thee till death. I wish I could be there hearing you sing. Uh, the next song is called um, How Deep the Father's Love. How Deep the Father's Love. Page three. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure That he should give his only son To make a wretch his treasure How great the pain of searing loss The father turns 
his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulder ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life I know that it is I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom But I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom uh, the next song is called um, Come Thou Fount. Come Thou Fount. It should be page number four. Come Thou Fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing Thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sprung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Oh to grace how great a debtor Daily I constrained to be let thy goodness like a fetter bind thy wandering heart to thee prone to wander Lord I feel it prone to leave the God I love here's my heart oh take and seal it seal it for thy courts above Oh, that day when freed from sinning, I shall see thy lovely face. Clothed in, in blood wash linen, how I'll sing thy sovereign grace. Come, my Lord, no longer tarry, take my ransom soul away. Send thine angels now to carry me to realms of endless day. Kindness can make somebody's day. A little act of kindness, a little gesture of kindness can really encourage somebody's heart. Not too, not too long ago, I was at a, a conference uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, and Nashville is home to the Grand Old Opry. Uh, so I had promised my, my daughter that I would bring home a, a souvenir from, from Nashville, a cute sweatshirt or, or shirt or something. So it's our last night there, and we didn't find anything that was cute um, near the hotel, so we opted to go to the mall. Uh, I don't know why we opted for the mall, because the mall had stores like Macy's and Nordstrom and, and JCPenney, and there was nothing cute there to buy her. Uh, well, it turns out that the mall was right across the street from the Grand Old Opry. And we knew that there was a store there that we could that we could go to, but we weren't sure that we could um, that we could get through security without tickets to the concert. 
Um, so we thought we'd give it a, a try, and we went over, and they said sure that we could we could go through and go to the store. So that's what we did, and we found a really cute a really cute top for my daughter. And as we were leaving, uh, there was two, there were two women in front of us, and they're they're chatting about where they're going to go. They want to go downtown and check out some some of the live music, and they're naming the places that had been recommended. Uh, we'd also been given some suggestions of uh, places to go, and one one in particular, we were told this is a must see if you're in Nashville. You should you need to go here. So uh, I, I went up to him and said, hey, I overheard your conversation. And we, uh, we heard that this, um, that this one place is like excellent, like you, you know, that it's a must see if you're in Nashville. So, you know, they appreciated, they appreciated that recommendation. And then they said, hey, do you guys want tickets to the show tonight? And we were a little bit confused. And, and they said, we were here, uh, we thought Dolly Parton, well, Dolly Parton was playing tonight, um, but she's not, she's playing tomorrow. And they didn't know the musicians that were, that were playing that night. Plus they were really upset because they'd paid a lot for the tickets and really expected to see Dolly there and had traveled quite some distance. So we're like, well, how much do you, do you want? Like, um, and they said, no, we're just gonna give them to you if you'd like to go. Um, so we said, yeah, sure, that would be, that would be awesome. So we went and we went in and uh, our seats were even great. Uh, we were sitting in the middle section uh, looking straight at the stage. I mean, just straight at the stage. It was just this great, great uh, seats. It was incredible. Uh, the thing that they do at the, at the Opry is that they'll have surprise, surprise guests that come unannounced, different, uh, different uh, musicians, country, um, country singers and such that will come and they'll just show up. Uh, and the announcer, as, as we're sitting down, the announcer says that um, a gentleman by the name of Garth Brooks and his wife, Trisha Yearwood, are there. And they are an iconic couple, a, an iconic uh, country couple. And so we're not sure if they're going to sing a song or what they're going to do. Uh, well, they were there to give an award. So get this. I mean, this is just still, uh, this is still incredible to me. Uh, they're there to give an award to President Jimmy Carter, former President Jimmy Carter, and his wife, Rosalind Carter. And out come the president and his wife to get this award. And then, you know, he greets the crowd and he talks for a few minutes. And I leaned over to my friend and I, and I said, like, is this really happening? Are we like in the same room with the president? And uh, could you pinch me? Uh, which she did, and she pinched me actually pretty hard. It actually hurt, but, so then I at least knew it was real, what was happening, right? Um, but I'll never forget, I'll never forget that we were sitting so close. He had taken a fall earlier in the week and we were so close that we could see his, his black eye. That's how close we were. Um, I don't think I'll ever have an opportunity to be in the same room as a president uh, like that again. So it's something I'll remember forever. And these women, they just, they just were kind. Uh, they met us and they said, do you want these? It was just this random act of kindness. So I think kindness is underrated. Uh, we equate it with being nice or pleasant, uh, avoiding conflict, don't ruffle feathers, that sort of thing. And those things are important, but I think being kind is, is more than that. And there are countless stories in the Bible where Jesus models, he models for us what it looks like to be kind. In uh, Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, it says this, When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him, a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I'm willing, he said, be clean. And immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. You know, back in those days, uh, if you had leprosy, you were outcast. You went to live elsewhere. Uh, nobody was allowed to touch you or be around you. You were considered unclean. Uh, and because Jesus had, had healed him, right, because he had been healed of his leprosy, this, this meant that this man could live, um, he could live a clean life. He was no longer unclean. Uh, I just can't even imagine what his family or friends' um, reaction might have been to him, but he could, he could be, be touched by them and he could touch them. Uh, and you know, touch, touch is so important to us. Uh, there's a thing if babies, uh, when babies are born and they don't have that, that connection, that, that touch of, of a mom holding them, um, uh, it's, they end up with, or they often have what's called uh, uh, fail to thrive, right? They fail to thrive because touch is that important. 
Uh, you know, simply holding somebody's hand, giving them a high five, patting them on the back, right? We don't even have to say words. Just that simple gesture of touch communicates love. Uh, they might experience joy. Um, it shows compassion or sympathy for something that's going on for them. Uh, a single touch, a, a single touch can change uh, somebody's whole day. You know, uh, kindness has the power to soften, to soften people's hearts. It has the power to soften people's hearts. It's pretty powerful. Uh, Luke 6.31 says this, Do unto others as you would have them do to you. You know, that sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? But it's not, it's not easy. Uh, it doesn't matter what someone else uh, says to us, what they do, how they behave. Uh, we're supposed to love them and be kind regardless. And our kindness uh, shouldn't be conditional. You know, it's really, it's, it's, it's uh, fairly easy to be kind to someone, but with the expectation that they're going to be kind back. And that's not how it works. It's unconditional, right? It doesn't matter uh, whether they receive our act of kindness or not. We're called to continue being kind. And it's much easier if someone reciprocates our kindness. It's also easier to be unkind if someone treats us unkind. But we only, we only have control over our own words and our own actions, and we can't control somebody else's behavior. But we can choose and respond. We can choose how we respond and react to circumstances. It's also important to remember that uh, God doesn't expect perfection from us, uh, nor can we, can, we, um, can we attain that. We're not going to be perfect this side of heaven. But we should be making progress. We should be striving uh, and walking toward, um, looking toward keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus and becoming more and more Christ-like. So we need to make progress. Um, Proverbs 3, uh, verses 3 and 4 says this, Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will, you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Uh, you know, we talked about the Good Samaritan a couple weeks ago. Uh, remember that story? A man was walking alongside the road, and he was robbed and beaten and, and left for dead. And one man passed by, uh, ignoring him, didn't want anything to do with it. And then a second man uh, walked by um, and did the same. And later on, a Samaritan man came and saw the man and saw that he needed help, and he, he helped him. He had compassion, he had compassion for the injured man, and he extended kindness and love. You know, so which of the three men um, was being, a, uh, being a, a man who was loving his neighbor? Which of the three? The Samaritan man. The Samaritan man was loving his neighbor. You know, sometimes it helps to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. Um, if, I was, if I was the one left on the side of the road, um, left for dead, uh, I sure would hope that somebody would stop to help me. Uh, you know, uh, 2,000 years later, um, it must just break Jesus' heart, it must break God's heart. Uh, 2,000 years later, uh, the poor, the homeless, gay, lesbian, people of color, mentally ill, the elderly, there's countless groups of people who are forgotten, who are left, and who are ignored. You know, I, I try, um, when I come to see you, uh, I really, um, my hope always is that I would say something that would be encouraging to you. And I know, uh, because I've talked to many of you, um, I know that uh, as, we, as we age and as we're able to do less and less and as we become more dependent on people, um, we often, you guys, there's often a sense of that there's not any value, that nothing that you do is of value. You're not contributing um, to society. You're not contributing anything that's worth, that's worth any value. And first of all, I'm going to tell you that that's a lie. That's just not true. Uh, as long as we're breathing, if we're still breathing, then God's not done with us yet. So your life matters and you have value. Uh, you know, Blue Oaks has come in several times and done some big things. Uh, we, um, we made over, uh, I think, something like 300 hygiene kits that got distributed to people, to homeless people in, in Oakland. Um, uh, and you guys all helped to make that possible. 
uh, we filled uh, several hundred, uh, maybe even a thousand or more, bags of uh, makeup type things for, um, for underprivileged moms at Christmas time. You guys have done those things. There's things that, that you've helped with that are, have incredible value. But, but what about in the everyday? Uh, what about when you're there? Uh, how, can you, how can you live this out? Um, well, I have a couple of suggestions for you. Uh, some of you are more physically impaired than others. And so if you're standing at the elevator, um, you know, you're going to get on uh, and you see that somebody's uh, worse off than you, you could hold the door for them. You could just hold the door open. Um, that could go a long way for encouraging, for encouraging someone. Do you remember when you first came here to live? It's challenging. It's hard. Uh, taken away from what you know and put into an environment uh, with a whole bunch of other people that you don't know. Uh, I have trouble just getting along with my own family in my house, so I just can't imagine you have all of these personalities and uh, different ways of, of being brought up and, and stuff, and you're, you're, you're thrust into an environment where you just have to uh, get along or figure things out. And um, do you remember how that, how that felt? Uh, there's always people um, coming, new, new residents that are entering the community. And I would encourage you, uh, this would be a really cool thing, it's really a kind, a kind thing. If you, uh, when, you notice, when you notice that somebody's new, uh, engage them. Ask them if they want to go sit by, uh, sit by the fire and, uh, you know, and visit, or maybe they want to do an activity with you. You could give somebody a hug. What about paying some, somebody a compliment? Um, what if they're wearing a top that's just a wonderful color on them? Why not, why not acknowledge that? Tell them that. Or, um, you know, when they get their hair done, I watch people come out of that salon and they just are so happy. They just feel so good, um, you know, having their hair done. Um, acknowledge that. Pay them a compliment. Uh, that, that means a lot to people that we um, are, uh, that we're aware, that we see them. People want to be known. Mother Teresa said this, um, we shall never know all the good that a simple smile can do. We shall never know all the good that a simple smile can do. Uh, and I'll take it one step further. Um, don't just uh, uh, smile, but if you don't know the person that you're smiling at, ask them what their name is. Introduce yourself and ask them what their name is. You don't have to do any more than that. Smile and ask somebody their name. I'm telling you, that is one of the most impactful things that you can do. People feel known, um, and we all want to be known. Uh, so those are the things, those are some of the things that I, that I thought of that you might be able to do um, in your environment on a daily basis, but there are opportunities. Just look for them. Uh, and don't overthink, don't overthink your random acts of kindness because even the smallest things that you do, the smallest things that you might not think matter, do matter. They do matter. You know, we imitate God's kindness by loving our enemies. Uh, Jesus said this in Ephesians, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. You know, we need to remember that. God sent his son to die for us. He sent his son to die for us. We've been forgiven of much. We've been reconciled to the Father. If we know Jesus, if, if we have acknowledged that we need a Savior, that we're sinners in need of a Savior, and we've accepted Jesus, um, we're reconciled to the Father. Jesus died for us. We've been forgiven of much, and we need to extend forgiveness to, to others. Yeah, I started my message today with that story, uh, you know, of the um, Opryland and being in Nashville. And uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I loved telling you guys about President Carter, so I love that story. Um, but it wasn't. It's not spiritual in nature. It was just sharing with you a, a random act of kindness that was done uh, to me and to my friend. And uh, what it did is it reminded me. It reminded me of what Jesus says: how we're supposed to be kind to one another. So uh, choose to be kind. It is a choice, um, and I hope that you'll choose to be kind to someone today. Uh, let's pray. God, just thank you so much for this day. Thank you just for the privilege of being here um, and singing and sharing some, some words. Uh, God, I just pray for, 
for um, protection. I pray for for health. I pray for um, encouragement. Lord, you know what each person here uh, needs, and I just pray that you would meet them where they're at. I pray that uh, you would um, surround them with your with your spirit uh, in a in a supernatural way that they would feel um, hugged as if by the Lord. So uh, thank you, God, for this time. Amen. Now we'll sing a, a couple songs and we'll be done. Uh, next, we're going to sing uh, The Old Rugged Cross. It should be page five in your book. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will for a crown Oh, the old rugged cross so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Next, uh, next song we're going to do is called This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Uh, and we haven't done this one for a while. Uh, and because we're talking about kindness and love, I just thought we could sing, um, I just thought we could sing, I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. All right. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of 
Jesus in my heart And I'm so happy, so very happy I've got the love of Jesus in my heart And normally, uh, every, every, um, every week for the last uh, three or four years, I pray a blessing over you uh, before I leave. And this time, we're going to go ahead and sing it. So it's in your book, um, and let's give it a, let's give it a go. Uh, probably some of it will be new for some of you, but um, I really liked it, and I thought this was, would be a fun way to, to pray a blessing over you. Uh, we'll do it a couple of times. The Lord bless you and keep you, make your face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. time. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. I sure do miss you guys, and uh, my prayer for you uh, is that you would stay well, and I sure hope I get to see you, uh, see you sometime soon. Uh, I want you to remember that uh, you have value. Um, I appreciate you, and I love you, and God loves you, and he's not done with you yet. See you next time.